it's the IPL season. In addition to all of the cricket that I know a lot of you will be watching, how about we try building a web application and um, learn some cool stuff? Well, irrespective of whether you follow cricket or not, I'm happy to announce that over the next few weeks, I'm going to be releasing uh, a series of videos that cover full stack application development, where we'll be building a simple IPL dashboard app from the scratch. Okay, this is an app that'll let you browse your favorite teams and access match results from the previous years of uh, IPL tournaments. Okay, is it called this the IPL dashboard? Um, before uh, I get into the details, for some of you who don't know, IPL stands for Indian Premier League. It's a tournament of cricket matches played by a bunch of different teams in India, and uh, it attracts players from all over the world. And uh, it's a pretty big deal. But having said that, you don't need to know cricket to follow along. What you need to understand is that we're getting data from a data source, somehow saving it to a database, and then building APIs and frontends to consume the data and make a nice dashboard available. This could basically be plug and play concept substitution for any other kind of a dashboard you can think about, all right? So um, here is the core uh, technologies that we're going to be building uh, for the IPL dashboard. We're going to be using Spring Boot for the API. We're going to be using React for the front end. And we're going to package it and deploy to AWS. OK, so here's what this dashboard looks like. So this is ready right now. I've recorded the whole process of building this application. And uh, this is deployed on AWS. Let me show you how it looks like as it is on AWS right now. All right, so what you're seeing here is the home page for the dashboard. You basically have the names of all the teams who play or have played in the IPL before. You can click on any one of these teams and you can look at the team dashboard for that team. Okay, it's gonna give you the name of the team and uh, a ratio of wins versus losses that this team has had throughout the IPL. And it has the latest few matches. It has the latest match in full detail, and it has some uh, previous matches, the, the previous three matches with cards which indicate whether the team won or lost, okay? So I'm looking at the Mumbai Indians team, and now it shows the, the match that this team won is shown in green, and that the match that the team has lost is shown in red. And I can click on a team name to go to the dashboard for that team. So right here, Delhi Capitals is the name of the team. I can click on it, and it's gonna take me to the dashboard for the Delhi Capitals team, all right? So this is React, which is making a call to the uh, Spring Boot mid-tier getting the data and displaying it with UI components that we have built, all right? Now I can click on the more link here. You see this, there's a more link and it's gonna show all of the matches that the team has played in a given tournament year, okay? So what this is showing right now is Delhi Capital matches in the year 2020. It doesn't have 2021 because as of recording this video, 2020 is the latest data, but it should be easy to port over the newer data because the application is taking care of ingesting the data and exposing it as an API. So this has all of the matches that the team, Delhi Capitals has played in the year 2020, again, color coded by whether this particular team won or lost a particular match. And now we can go to previous years, right? I can go to 2018, click on this, and it's gonna show all of the matches for the year 2018, right? I can click on another team and go to the dashboard for that team and so on. So this is basically how you browse the, the IPL dashboard. So it's basically the app that we're gonna be building step by step, right? So the key thing to remember here is that in the series, the series of videos that we're gonna be uh, tackling, we're gonna be, we're gonna be building this thing, you'll actually get to see me do this from the scratch, right? So this whole application that you saw, you're gonna actually see me build this from the scratch and you actually get to see every line of code written on video, okay? You can actually follow along by doing exactly the same thing that I've done, and you will be left with this app at the end of it, right? At least that's the goal, right? You get to see every line of code that's written. And not just that, what I also try to do in these videos is kind of highlight the design decisions that have been made, okay? I kind of think out loud and I speak about all the decisions that I've made, you know, kind of like, why do I do this in this way versus this other way? I kind of vocalize those so that you are aware of why I take the decisions that I take while I built this, all right? So uh, a detailed view of the technologies that we're gonna build, right? What are the technologies that go into this? Uh, again, since it's Java brains, you should know that some of the technologies that go into it are kind of like obvious, but uh, I'm gonna highlight what are the things that go in, that have gone into this application, all right? So we're gonna be using Spring Boot for uh, basically the whole 
main server application, right? The servlet container application that gets deployed is Spring Boot. Uh, we're gonna be using Spring Batch to ingest the data that we get from a data source, right? The IPL data that we use, we get from Kaggle, okay? Kaggle is one of the sources of data sets. There are a handful of good ones. I just happened to pick Kaggle. Uh, it's a popular choice as well. There is uh, IPL data for all of the years. Uh, the IPL has been on, that's in 2008 to 2020. So we have Spring Batch ingest the data and populate our databases, right? We're using Spring Batch for it. We don't have to use Spring Batch, but we use it because it's a good learning opportunity. And then we're using JPA to interact with the database, okay? We're using some JPA technologies like repositories. We're using JPL query language uh, queries as well to interact with the database and to also do some additional intelligence from the data that we ingest from that external source, okay? And then once you've done that, we're gonna use Spring MVC APIs to expose certain key APIs that are gonna be consumed by a React frontend, right? We're gonna build a new React app from the scratch and we're gonna consume those APIs and we're gonna show the UI that you just saw. Uh, while we are building React, we're gonna use a lot of the modern uh, best practice way of building these React applications, at least as of today. We're gonna to be using functional components as opposed to class-based components. We're gonna be using React hooks we're gonna be using effects, all of the best practice way of building React applications. We're gonna be covering that when we build this React app. And uh, we're not just gonna build the app, we're also gonna style it and make it look good, right? We're gonna be using CSS Grid, which is, I think, the best way to style anything today. It has good browser acceptance as well. So um, it's a fairly good and modern CSS technology that we're gonna be using for styling and we're gonna make it look like what you saw in the demo, all right? Once we are done building it, we're gonna deploy it on AWS. We're gonna use Elastic Beanstalk. We're gonna deploy our Spring Boot application. And the demo that I just showed you was served from the AWS instance that we have deployed it to. This is a pretty intensive course. Uh, there is a total of about six and a half hours of content and it spans about 15 videos. The best way to consume these series, uh, the series of videos is to actually code with me, right? Don't sit back and watch, code with me. You see me do every step, right? There's nothing hidden from you. So you can easily follow along and get the same results. So please do that. Don't be swayed by all the other suggested videos on YouTube. You know, this is not entertainment, right? This is hard work, but I hope you stick with it and complete the application and have a full stack development experience on your hands by following all the steps that I take. I don't edit any mistakes that I've made, okay? So when I run into issues, either because of my ignorance or because I messed up, I don't just edit it out. I show you what mistakes I made, what issues I ran into, and I show you how I fixed it, all right? And I also show you multiple ways to do something. It's not just like I'm gonna do one way and call it done. Uh, I sometimes show you the wrong way to do it and then the right way to do it. And again, these are all things which I think are really helpful as, as we build a real world application. So it's not a tutorial in that sense. <clears throat> There's a GitHub repo um, that I'm gonna publish with the first video of the series. Uh, you can actually, clone the repo, and I also have commit checkpoints. In, in the process of building this application, I actually do certain commits at certain key checkpoints. So when you're stuck, you can actually revert to that commit checkpoint and get to the state of the code as it was when I made that commit, right? In case you get lost or you wanna follow along, you can actually revert to that commit and then take it from there. I'm gonna try and release one video every two days. Each video typically is about like a half an hour of coding uh, and it has a, a definite logical conclusion at the end of it. However, I'm gonna make all of the videos available for uh, the channel members as a thank you. It's not exclusive. I am gonna make this available for free for everyone, but it's just that I, for channel members, it's gonna be immediately available. The whole set of videos is gonna be available. So if you wanna access it right away, all you need to do is click on the join button. Uh, you don't have to do it though. You will get access to all of the videos as I release them every other day, right? It's just a way for me to say thank you to the people who have actually joined. The thing to remember though is this doesn't end with the video series, okay? So I'm gonna make this uh, project available and uh, you actually have the ability to improve it. 
This is a problem that a lot of people have with open source. They say, I want to contribute to open source, but then they don't know where to start. And the problem that they have is, okay, I have this huge code base and I don't understand a lot of stuff in that code base. How do I contribute? I'd like to understand the code base before I contribute or make changes to it. Well, now here's your chance. Since you've seen every line of code written for this code base, you actually have a unique uh, opportunity here to really understand what's going on in this code base and to actually suggest changes and make modifications, right? You can go to the GitHub repo. I plan to add some bugs, feature improvements, and uh, you know tickets there where you can actually pick that up and then say, hey, I want to fix this or I want to make this change. Or you can come up with something on your own, right? So do that, fork the repo, make a pull request, and I'm going to review your code and you know give helpful feedback or suggestions or maybe learn from your code. So please do that. This repo is going to be available after you're done with watching all of these videos. You will have this unique perspective of seeing this whole project being built. So I hope I hope that is going to add an additional value when you're working on that repo and you'll be in a better position to make improvements or suggestions or modifications to that code. Uh, I also request you to comment on the series of videos itself when you see that you didn't understand something or you have like, hey, I want to learn more about that. Can you make a tutorial? Please comment and uh, let me know, right? If you run into bugs, that's another opportunity for me, to, for you to say, hey, this is something that is not working for me. So please comment if I see enough people running into these problems, I'm happy to make another video which tackles that and then add to this series of videos. But that said, let's get going. So the description of this video is gonna have some more details about when the next videos are gonna show up, kind of like the schedule for when the videos are gonna be released. I will, tr again, like I said, I'm gonna try and release them every other day. Uh, I'm also gonna post the GitHub repo when the first video gets released, hopefully in a couple of days from this, from the time of this video being released. If you're watching this video much later and you see the dates in the description in the past, which means that all the videos have already been released. So go check out the playlist and have fun watching all of them. All right, look forward to the first of the series of videos being released in this channel. So once the first video is released, you will see that card somewhere over here. All right, so go check that out.